All right, today I'm gonna be replacing these disconnects, which have done me well, but with something a little better, a little easier. These uh, anti-rock sway bars that you don't have to disconnect. I guess the real question will be in here, do I have to fully remove this bumper and winch, or can I just unbolt it and try to get in here because this is where I'm gonna be installing, and then will I have to cut the bumper at all? Thinking I'm gonna have room to just fits in here and have room to move. But I guess we'll time will tell if I'm gonna have to cut the bumper. I'm hoping not because it'd probably mess up the powder coat. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, take off this bumper, or loosen it, and see where we stand. solution is to set the bumper on top of the frame nails and then just temporarily attach it so I don't have to mess with taking the winch and lights off and that'll make it all a little easier and I can fully access these probably, hopefully. Well as it appears, lights, bumper, remove that, that takes us through step three. Looks like next we're going to disconnect the sway bar uh, links from um, the part of the frame and we don't have this plastic trim piece here anymore because we already have an aftermarket bumper. And then I'll go ahead and remove the uh, sway bar from the frame with the sway bar mounts. So these guys are here. I'm gonna take this one off, this one off, and I'll grab, take, unbolt this, and this whole unit will come off together. And even though disconnects are better than stock, this is one of the reasons going to Anorock, this kind of stuff is annoying. Take this guy up, it falls. I had these mounts here, and the tire would just hit them, it's bent them, it's got into them all over it, so. I think the anti rock's gonna be great. I've run them before in other Jeeps, just decided it was finally time for this Jeep after taking it out into the woods again last weekend, and Buddy had it, and I was like, yep, really need to go back to anti rock. So 15 millimeter, and take off those four bolts. Probably have to throw the bumper back on the frame to get that one, but there we go. Should be able to get this guy out, okay. This is disconnecting the sway bar assembly from the frame with from the map with the mounts. Get this whole thing out of the way. All right, so now it's ready to. All right, so now we're ready to put the sway bar bushings into the frame old soles. There's only one way it can go. It has a flat spot right here. You can clearly see the flat spot on top. We're going to want to run a little bit of grease in here and use a block of wood and we're going to hammer in here. Take a 
block of wood. And hope for the best. Got it just about all the way in. Probably should have shaved some of the metal burrs up and around here. They're kind of peeling on the edges. So I'm just gonna give it a couple hits with the rubber mallet gently so you don't crack anything, but just to make sure it sits as flush. Really don't think it's going in any farther than that, just, but it should be all right. There you go, you can see. Got it pretty good there. There's a little bit of the uh, fraying up there, but it's pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna get that in a little more there. Just want to get it as flush as possible. And now it's time to repeat on the other side. This side doesn't seem to have as many birds as the other did, so should be good. But we'll still throw a little grease on there just because. So I say to apply black grease. I don't have any. I'm gonna roll with this marine grease that I've run over a few times and have laying around. So hopefully this works. Maybe later I'll uh, try and get some extra real grease in there, but hopefully this at least helps us with the install. Gonna be pretty liberal with this because it's definitely gonna be a tight fit. That's what she said. <laughs> Sally all the way because it's going to take a little bit of extra room. I'm going to have to be hammering over here, so this should be interesting. What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Tube is sealed, you can't see it. You're gonna have to try and get it as close as you can and maybe feel through on this side.
You want this shaft to stick out one inch, they say, from the bushing evenly on both sides. So it's gonna need a little bit more, but almost there, at least it's coming through, so that's good. Like we got these guys even now this side and that side oh maybe that's a little short i guess measuring would help but we're eyeing it up and we're gonna huh we got these guys through so they're measuring the same this side and that side so now we're ready to uh get the rest connected 15 millimeter gets these guys off So I can kind of wedge this rubber bushing out of here. And that'll help us release the sway bar. All right, perfect. brackets out of here which is what the sway bars used to connect to when they were discoed of course there's you know something different in there but we'll get that out Yep, that wrench is still there. Like I said, we're gonna deal with that afterwards. Now we're on step 13. We gotta take our arm here, and then our nice hardware here. So we pinch it on, we're gonna go ahead and install this on here. And we'll cinch it down with using these holes here. These are the new forged arms, not the old steel arms that have the indents for strength. You only get three holes here for adjustment, but I guess no one really uses the other ones anyways. That's going to be your loosest setting, and I'll make it a little tighter on the road. We're going to go ahead and fit this on here. Got to find the teeth to line up. Well, looks like it went on there. Okay. There you go. There's our arm installed on there ready for the end links but looking good i made some custom stickers to kind of match the rest of the motif of the jeep with the the red and black that we had going on so i think that'll look good with those and yeah let's get the rest of this on there of course i got that curry steering as well the best you can get you are more than likely i'm going to need to cut this but for now i'm going to install it i'm see where it sits and come on so i am going to go ahead and just tighten it all the way There you go. All right, so that's about where it bottomed out. Still pretty long. I can tell that's gonna be too long. It's not gonna keep our bar parallel. I'll go ahead and install it and then I'll go back and adjust everything later. But to get this on now and at least show you the install, we'll start there. To make sure that we have our bars installed at the same spline so they're not mismatched, I'm gonna go ahead and put it at level for now just to make sure when I go to the other side that it's level as well. And then I'll at least know that the splines are matched up with the arms there. There we go. So we got her nice and level. It's hard to tell, but yeah, it is. We'll go ahead and throw the other side on and then we'll get our hardware on here and button these things down. And then we'll check our clearance for our bumper. I'm hoping, like I said, we don't have to cut this bumper because it'll ruin our powder coating. And then we can get that around there and there's room for it to actuate inside the pocket here. Let's hope the uh, good fellows at Orfab thought about that. All right, got both arms now. It's time to drop in these two and a half inch bolts and nylon nuts. Those guys go right in there, nice and easy. And then this goes right on there. Then we 
don't give any specs for this, so we're gonna ugga dugga it. All right, on to step 15, which is installing the retaining washers and bolts. That's what these look like. Give you this nice little CNC washer here to finish off the look. I right, want you to throw some ASLCs in there so that guy doesn't freeze in there. Yeah, it says torque to spec. Not really sure what that is, but we'll get that tight by hand. Looks good though, finishes it off pretty nice. All right, now that I got these guys tightened up and this tightened up, I can go ahead and throw my bumper back on, see where our clearance were, and again, hope we don't have to cut this, because that would suck. So this is what it looks like inside the bumper. I guess the only issue is whether or not it's gonna allow me to go all the way up or all the way down. We'll have to check the droop and everything. So it looks like it'll fit for street driving, but we'll definitely have to check it for off-roading. Once these things start moving around, we'll see how high. Yeah, they don't think they'll go that high, but I guess we'll see how low. Oh, well, that's pretty low. We might be safe because it's definitely gonna get negative. All right, for these here, you will need a five inch and a three quarter. You've got right here the ability to grab it there. And you need that to loosen this guy up. All right, now you wanna install this with this one pointing out way and this one pointing in towards the Jeep. Uh, I've seen these kits come a few different ways. This one in particular I have in my hand, this is a reverse thread nut. So you just wanna take your jam nuts and make sure they're all the way up and tighten those with the wrench. But this is how we're gonna start with this and um, see where we're at. All right, so I dropped in our lower length there. And now we're just gonna adjust this. It fits on here. Um, since this is so long to begin with, I am gonna cut it, but like I said, it all has to do with finding the center of your actual suspension travel, so it's gonna take a little bit of playing with. So for right now, since this is so long, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the tightest. This hole here will give you your loosest on-road, your best off-road, but most vehicles, they do get to have to drive to the trail if it's not a trailer queen like this one does, and I drive it a lot to the beach and everything else, so I am gonna start with it back here. Then do some testing and tuning and see where we're at. And I get a sense it's so long. So we're gonna start in the tightest setting back here. side complete for now until we do our adjusting you know fix this problem but yeah that is the driver's side complete looks like our favorite person showed up don't know what that could be but you know never a bad thing when brown santa rolls in got the passenger end link on and it's time to just get these nuts on there and cinch her up passenger side all set up time to get this bumper bolted back on and uh, test it out This is my pile of uh, discarded parts. Don't have to disco anymore, although if you're going to, these rusty ones are awesome. They're greasable. Definitely pass those on to another Jeeper, but you know, maybe someone just getting started. Those are great, but I'm just glad we're done with all this excess parts. All right, I came to this parking lot to try and test some body roll. Let's see. Kind of giving it the old once over. I definitely noticed a tiny bit more, but not much. Again, we do have it on the tightest setting. First test drive was extreme. Drove it all the way to the beach. Anti-rock was nice and solid. So I need to find something a little bigger to test it, but I just wanted to see how it would work in and check some clearances. And it seems to be, seems to be all good, at least on a little flexed out. There's the driver's side. Yeah, definitely happy with it. So now that it's on there, it's good. It's time to deal with this nuisance bolt, which is always a problem on TJ's. I've heard that if you loosen this body mount bolt right here, you can lift the grill up just enough out of the way to work. That's a 16 millimeter, so we're gonna try that. 
Well, that was incredibly loose. So probably good I checked that anyways. Let's see if it gives us the clearance we need to get that bolt out of the way. So if your sway bar is still on there, you can use that for leverage, but I have a hammer here and a second hammer I'm gonna use. And oh yeah, well, look at that. It definitely looks like it gives us some room. So I'm gonna mess with this. The gen rights might have to be loosened up a little too to, to help because they're probably holding it on there, but we'll see. Look at that, totally worked. So now we can get that bolt out, hopefully. And with seriously just a little bit of tension on this setup, I think we should be able to, yep, look at that. Get this guy up and out of the way and finally get this bracket off of here. That was a great tip. So this is all just reading some TJ forums and there you go. Now we actually get that cleaned up, maybe throw some paint on there. Finally have our sway bar bound removed. Onto the passenger side, we know to use the open end of the wrench <laughs> to not get ourselves backed up into a stupid situation. And finally got that guy. A little bit of pressure out of there. So, boom, finally. Hopefully that helps someone out with this stupid tab that is just right over that sway bar mount. Like they don't ever plan on you replacing the bushings that go bad and crack. Thanks, Jeep. And now it's time to put that body mount back in. <laughs> Make sure it's actually tight, because it definitely wasn't before. And I did decide to put those back in there, just so there's not more holes from in another sum right there, but you know, kind of looks a little better since I don't have the uh, plastic guard on there anymore. Let me sit up I paint that up. Gave it just a quick squirt of paint. Looks good enough for me, and yeah, highly recommend this. All right, I know that video was a little long, but I think it kind of went through a real life of what it's like to do this in your garage. And hopefully even if you scrub it, you find a tip or two that helps you or you can pass on to somebody. But that was my anti-rock uh, experience and uh, hope it helped you out. Please uh, like and subscribe if you want to see some more videos. Thanks.